Good evening. I'm Dan Scahill. For the next 30 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the sport of motocross, a stadium motocross. We'll be speaking with a professional motocross racer, Marty Smith, from Team Honda. And we'll also take a look at some exciting footage of the only Super Bowl of motocross from this past July at the L.A. Coliseum. Matter of fact, it was the first chance I had to see a motocross race was two years ago. I got a chance to see this sport. And before we go any further, let's take a look and see what this motocross is all about. This is the Los Angeles Coliseum, as you've known it since it was built back in 1932. Through that peristyle have passed some of contemporary sports' greatest heroes. But the Coliseum is undergoing a transformation to motorized athletics. Over 4,000 cubic yards of dirt has been molded into a 13-turn, three-quarter of a mile course. That peristyle itself will become a launching pad off which the very greatest motocross riders in the world will fly to the floor of the arena. And here is the finished product, perhaps the most spectacular artificial course in this sport's 32-year history. At the start line, for the first of three motos to decide the Super Bowl of motocross, the publisher of Cycle World magazine, Joe Parkers. This is the starting line of the first 250 International motocross at the Super Bowl of motocross 1975. Motocross over here in America is going to be very competitive. There are a lot of very good young riders coming up, like Marty Smith, Jimmy Allen, Jimmy Pomeroy, Brad Leckie, and I really think uh, the Americans are going to be the next uh, world champions for sure. The riders are lined up in front of a mechanical starting gate. This gate is tripped by the man at the right hand here with a lever. There's a lot of good riders out there, the best in the world, and uh, it's, a tough, it's, a, it's a tough race. If I get a good start, I might do all right, but I'm just not going to, I just don't want to get hurt. I'm just going to take it easy. The best one out of here is the guy who gets the best hole shots. They're getting ready. They're all watching this man's hand who is right here on my right. It's going to go, and they're out. The first two in the enter motocross is underway. 24 riders off to a beautiful start, Dave Despain. Down into the first turn goes Marty. Oh, Smith has cragged a vicious end-over-end crash for the leader, Marty Smith, who just a moment ago, Ken, said he was going to take it easy. Hate to see if he'd really turned it on out there. He's up and seems okay. Appropriating first place and nearly down is Rex Staten. Staten from Fontana, California, went all the way down to one knee. 50,000 people go crazy as Rocket Rex moves out into the lead. Second is the charging Czechoslovakian Zdenek Velky. Third, the four-time world champ, Roger de Costa of Belgium. Meanwhile, Joe Parker is standing by on the floor of the Coliseum with Marty Smith. Marty, can you tell me what happened? Well, I forgot about the change of first turn location. And uh, some bats right there couldn't stop. You gonna be all right for the next moto? Yeah, I think so. We'll take a look at some more footage of the Ole Super Bowl of motocross and talk with professional rider Marty Smith right after this. Motorcycling is very popular with over 10 million individuals in this country. Oh, there's probably 30,000 or 30 million interested people in the sport of motorcycling. Bankers, lawyers, students, everybody inv is involved in motocross or motorcycling. So much, in fact, it's quite possibly more popular than golf. The largest aspect of motorcycling is motocross. Motocross has grown to a household word since its U.S. introduction in 1969. There are probably already 8,000 events in the U.S. each year. This explosion is fueled by sales of motorcycles to riders 6 to 60 years of age, motocross replica bicycles, high school motocross teams, and even the comic strip Peanuts in a TV show. Motocross racing spawned more than 40 years ago in Europe. It's a kidney-jarring, bone-rattling blend of man, machine, and terrain, the rougher the better. Riders race specially constructed, high-powered, lightweight motorcycles costing up to $30,000 to finish first on a one-mile dirt mark course, usually somewhat kidney-shaped. They blast from a mechanical starting gate to negotiate narrow corners, roller coaster hills, savage ruts, blinding mud pits. They go around and around for 30 minutes nonstop, and then they go out and do it twice more, just to compete one vent. The overall highest finisher is the winner, and he also has the pains and bruises to prove it. Motocross is second only to soccer and is at physical demands. Football trails in at eighth. In pro football, a top football player might go 14 minutes a game. In the same period, a motocross racer endures one and a half hours on his mechanized bucking bronco and up to 90 miles an hour. Motocross is truly the sport of its times. Such popularity, it may even overtake rock concerts. 
Behind all of this is the Super Bowl of motocross, a phenomenal race where aggressive promoter Mike Goodwin moved a throwing sport into the comfortable spectator availability of the L.A. Coliseum. In 1972, the sport has skyrocketed since. The Super Bowl of motocross is the largest, most prestigious, talented race that takes place in the United States. The race is on a demanding $100,000 artificial course built annually on the floor of the Los Angeles Coliseum or the Anaheim Stadium where the next major event is taking place. Athletes comparable to Stewart, Newcomb and uh, other such riders compete in a quest to capture the champagne glory and gold of the spectators. Motocross often outdraws the Dodger games. Now let's return and take a look at some of our footage here. The only Super Bowl of motocross. With me now is professional motocross rider Marty Smith. He's 19 years of age and rides for Team Honda. Marty, earlier we were taking a look at some footage and you took a nasty spill. Is this type of racing or this type of accidents or this type of uh, activity take place in stadium races? Well, uh, if you're a professional, you're out on the track, you're doing what you know how to do best. Uh, sometimes you have a slip up and you can crash. Uh, it does happen, but if you're a novice, you know, that's what you're out there for. You're out there to learn, and it does happen. I see. I noticed that with such the speed and the riding and this gear that you have on, can, can you tell us some of this gear that you have on? What is this purpose to serve? Okay, we have the helmet here. Uh, it's good for a hard impact if you, uh, when you crash, you know, you hit your head. Uh, the goggles, they're, uh, they're, they're good for rocks that are flying out from the rear tire of somebody. Usually have a mouth guard here, which protects your mouth or your nose. Mm -hmm. You have a... Uh, there are shoulder pads. Uh, it's good if you crash, if you go through a fence. And you have a chest protector. It's built in, usually, for uh, also rocks coming from the rear tire when you're following somebody. I notice you have a, this is a kidney belt. This is something that joins the leathers together. What does this do here? Well, this is, uh, see, motocross is very, uh, it's very jarring for your insides. Uh, this kidney belt kind of like, uh, it holds your insides together, keeps them in place. <laughs> uh, we got the leathers there. Uh, they got knee cups in there. Uh, they got padded right here. They're also good. It's all it's all for if you crash. You know, it's in, you know if you bump into somebody or something like that. With all this gear on here, you have more gear on than a professional ice hockey player, right? Yeah, uh, you got to do it. This is a professional sport, and your life is in danger, and you got to be protected. Let me ask you. Speaking about football and ice hockey and all these things, this gear that you have on here, obviously you got to be in fit. You're an athlete. What do you do to practice daily? What's your routine to maintain your shape for winning? Uh, I like to uh, get out about three or four days a week on my bike and get some good practice in, maybe three hours a day or something like that. I run, maybe uh, I like to get out to run three or four days a week. Uh, you know, just keeping in shape. I have a, you know, I don't watch my diet too well, but I don't eat junk food either. I see. What does Marty Smith, the professional racer, do in his own time? Uh, he doesn't have a lot of that, uh, but when he does, he likes to go camping, I guess you might say, maybe. You're the youngest racer in this industry, 19 years of age, Team Honda, professional rider. You ride around the country. You are, if I'm not mistaken, the highest point-winning national number one plate rider, are you not? Yeah, I guess so, that's true. How many races did you ride this year? Oh, I think I rode maybe... Uh Maybe close to 47 races, maybe 40. 47 races, 19 years of age, riding for Honda and working your way around the country. I'm curious, we're getting back to the part of being a pro rider. Are you not possibly one of the youngest riders in this country, motocross? Most people would think, excuse me, for most people would think that a, a rider would be a little bit older, a little bit younger. Well, if you start out young, you can, you know, you get the knack of it. You know what I mean? You know, if it's anything, if you start young, you'll be better at it. And I'm, I'm trying anyway. Okay. I guess I am one of the youngest. We saw you take a spill at the Super Bowl of Motocross, and I think we'll probably be looking at some more film of the Super Bowl of Motocross, and Marty will be mentioning about the Anaheim track that will be coming up, an incredible $100,000 Grand Prix-style course. And we'll have more on Marty and some more Super Bowl footage right after this. Possibly the most exciting part of the race is the last part of the race, the third moto. Let's take a look at that third moto at the Ole Super Bowl of Motocross, the L.A. Coliseum. We roll the film. These are the leaders. Jimmy Weinert is third. Jim Ellis is second. And Belke is the leader. We're getting ready now. Watch very carefully because the riders, every one of them is going to make the same kind of start. They're all staying back at least five, six feet from the start, and there they go. 
A beautiful start, and there's a new development. Mike Runyard has gone out in front as he exploded out of the gate. He's a teammate of Jimmy Ellis, and that's a factor because Ellis is right there in third spot behind number 21, Pierre Carsmakers. Buried back in the pack is the race leader, Zdenek Belke, number 77. Tony DiStefano rides in fourth spot on number three. Here's DiStefano cutting down to the inside. Runyard is your leader, but DiStefano shoots up into second place on machine number three, making two passes in that corner. So your leader as they come over that big jump is Mike Runyard. Here comes second place, Tony DiStefano. Third is Jimmy Ellis on the outside, trying to get up into the lead on his Can-Am. The race moving down that back stretch and over the big jump as the back markers try to make up ground. Here's the Stefano challenging on Mike Runyard, bike number 36, trying to get to the inside. There's Ellis on machine number seven. It's tight traffic through that twisting infield turn up and over the hoop de doo And here's the Stefano out of shape, somersaulting over the handlebars. The second place rider has crashed. De Stefano tries to regain his feet, but his hopes in the Super Bowl bite the dust here. What a bad break for this 19-year-old Pennsylvania campaigner. That's going to put those two Can-Am stars first and second as the crowd cheers them on. It's the black and white of the Canadian manufacturer running in first and second spot. Mike Runyard, the leader, and Jimmy Ellis is your second-place campaigner right now. Remember, Ellis has to win this third and final moto to win the lion's share of $30,000. Delkey has only to finish second in this third and final moto to win the Super Bowl of motocross. Here comes Ellis making his charge to the outside around Runyard. They come down to that big leap at the start-finish line, and Ellis vaults into the lead. This entire throng comes to its feet, and cheer number seven, Jimmy Ellis on as he leads in the Super Bowl of motocross. This young 19-year-old who exploded out of the New England scene two years ago is one of the emerging superstars. His pit crew, dad, mom, his young bride, and the family's pet skunk. He's three for three in stadium races this year, and we ask him if that gives him a psychological advantage. I probably have a little advantage over everybody else it's because I did win those other three races, and I'm hoping to do real good in this race. We have a lot of competition out here today. With tremendous confidence, jumping about 25 rows, the Los Angeles Coliseum, Jimmy Ellis reigns supreme here in round number three with an eight-second advantage over second place. Oh, he's in trouble, Ken. He's off the racetrack. Ellis hit that whoop de doo and got out of control, and here comes the field bearing down on him as he struggles to get back underway. That margin is trimmed down to just a couple of seconds as Mike Runyard is right there in second spot, and Zdenek Belke has now charged up into fourth. It's an all-new ball game for Jimmy Ellis, the race leader at this point, as Belke is knocking at the door back there. There's Belke, number 77, and he's challenging for third with Rich Thorwaldson. Here comes your leader, Jimmy Ellis, but there's lots and lots of action right behind him as Belke tries to close in on third spot. Here's Belke, number 77. He goes to the inside on Thorwaldson. Belke is there. Belke's got third place right behind Mike Runyard, the teammate of the leader, Jimmy Ellis, as they go up and over the jump. Ellis is first, Runyard is in second place. They are teammates. What about it, Davis Bain? Will Runyard block for the leader, Ellis? You can bet that Jimmy Ellis is hoping so. Runyard is going to have to do something to keep Belke behind him and out of second spot. The leader, Ellis, two-second advantage over his teammate, Mike Runyard, who crashes. Runyard is slammed into the wall of the peristyle. Belke has moved into second position of the Super Bowl of motocross. Here comes another challenger right behind him, too. It's number two, Jim Weiner. Weiner knights to the inside and takes over third. And now he has only Zdenek Belke ahead of him as he's trying to challenge for second. Belke can win it all right here. All he has to do is stay up behind this number seven. That's Belke, number 77. All he has to do is stay on two wheels, and he will win the Super Bowl of motocross with a second-place finish in the third moto. So Jimmy Ellis is no longer the master of his own fate. He is the leader in the race, but that's not going to guarantee him the victory. Here comes your leader, Ellis. Belke is in second place, and now Weinert becomes the ally of Jimmy Ellis. He's got to get around Belke and take over second spot to ensure the victory for the Can-Am rider. Belke won the first moto. Ellis won the second. This is the showdown. And they come around here as Zdenek Belke, number 77. He's feeling that pressure from Jim Weiner. Weiner is definitely closing on machine number two. Around through the whoop de doo jumps they come with Jim Weiner trying valiantly to reel in the charging Czechoslovakian Zdenek Belke. There's the leader, Ellis, still in front, and Belke is nibbling away at his lead as they go up into the peristyle. It looks like that battle for second place is drawing them closer and closer to the leader. There's your second place battle going up and out of sight right now. 50,000 people waiting for this leap, and here it is. 
really heaving that bike forward. Jimmy Ellis trying to get an advantage over the second place rider, and Ryder is down in the peristyle. That's fourth place Pierre Carsbakers, who is sidelined. The riders go streaking by as he tries to get back into it. In the three decades of motocross, there has never been an event such as this throng of 50,000 is seen here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. As we move to the final moments, we have three riders within one second of each other. No interval whatsoever. There they are, Dave Spain, to decide it all here in the Super Bowl. Belke trying to protect that crucial second position from the onslaught of Weiner. Cuts down to the inside. Oh, he's in trouble on the whoop-de-doo. Belke has crashed. Belke crashes through that whoop-de-doo series. Frantically trying to get that bike back on his feet as the crowd comes to life, sensing a victory. Here it is again. Here's Belke down on the inside. You see the front wheel get out of shape. He falls off and almost appears to be trying to tackle Winder as he senses victory escaping his grasp. Kinetic Belke has crashed. Jimmy Ellis leads. Winder is second. And Thorwalds runs in third spot. An interesting development here. Winder stands a very good chance of winning the Super Bowl of motocross. It's been havoc with the leaders all through the event. And should Ellis have trouble, Weinert can take the whole thing home. That's right, Ken. If Weinert can get by Ellis, they end up tied on total points for the event, and Weinert wins the Super Bowl of motocross on the basis of the best finish in this final moto. There's the separation from first to second. Belke is up after his crash and is running fifth. Back to the peristyle go the leaders. Ellis, number seven in command. He just seems to get more and more confidence as this event continues. He's got perfect lines. Oh, Belke is down. Belke has crashed again, probably on the effects of that first impact. He's shaken by it. He's out of the picture now, Ken. There's no doubt about that. It's amazing the beating these athletes take in this sport. Well, it's the second most physically demanding sport in the world, Ken, behind professional soccer. American professional football, interestingly enough, ranks in eighth position in that medical survey. Jimmy Ellis of Cobalt, Connecticut, seems to be on his way to victory. But every time we've had a man in front, he usually has gone down throughout these previous two motos and including this event some of the leaders have had real problems this guy right here jim weiner has the ability to do it all he's a 500 cc national champion he could reel in ellis on this course and take that victory away from him in the waning moments there goes jimmy ellis up the peristyle and out of sight running in second spot is jim weiner there's your third place contender that's rich thorwaldson on bike number 11 the air cars makers after that crash has charged back to fourth jim west is in fifth and rex staten is now in sixth place on the racetrack in the third moto the amazing story here is that rex staten in sixth position remember he was the victim of that horrible double endo crash earlier here he is up and still riding in the super bowl of motocross rapidly moving towards his conclusion here at the los angeles coliseum it's all over that crowd is just going ecstatic here as they realize that a united states campaigner either weiner in second or ellis in first is going to take all the marbles in Super Bowl number four of motocross. In fact, some of that crowd in this very last lap of competition is already beginning to break across the track down here, Dave. A very dangerous situation. The fans come streaming down and across the racetrack. We've still got bikes out there at racing speed, and it's dangerous indeed. It's another obstacle on this course filled with obstacles. They're all trying to get at the winners, and the leader right now is this young man, Jimmy Ellis. Ascending to Peristyle for the final time, Ellis going for victory. All he has to do is stay up for about one-third of the course now, and it's all his. He's put Jim Weiner's well back behind him, and Jimmy Ellis appears headed for the biggest motorcycling victory of his life in the Super Bowl. Listen to this thunderous crowd as Ellis moves toward victory. He works his way past some of the lap riders. We think the Los Angeles Rams, Dave, are on their way to a Super Bowl victory the way this crowd is responding to this young American's efforts in the Super Bowl of motocross. Jimmy Ellis now just one turn away from victory. Goes wide to the outside. Here he comes over the final jump looking for the checkered flag. Everybody's on their feet and a victory wave as he takes the checkered flag. You got it, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of the Super Bowl of motocross is Jimmy Ellis with help from number two, Jim Weiner. That is incredible racing. We'll have more right after this.
Marty, I must admit, motocross racing is incredible. You guys go and go and go and hammer yourselves out there. I'm curious, I, I believe we can get a, a shot of the rendition here of the track. Can you tell me something about this, this motocross track that's coming to Anaheim Stadium? Some of the key points that as a spectator, as a rider, what do you look for out there? Well, the start's going to be, uh, it's going to be a key point because there's going to be 40 riders starting at the same time. Mm. And they all want to get to that first turn first, and not too many of them can. And uh, the whole track, really, is going to be really exciting for the spectators. Everybody's going to be able to see everything. Let me ask you something. Working your way around the track that we're looking at here, there's jumps, there's ruts, there's mud holes, there's all kinds of gear. Doesn't this tear a bike apart? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just as hard on the bike as it is on the rider. I'll be doggone. Motocross racing, stadium motocross racing, an incredible form of racing. I'll tell you what, Marty, thank you for joining us in here tonight. Joining us here tonight for this motocross little display here of stadium motocross, exactly what it's all about. My name is Dan Scahill, and this has been... Stadium Motocross, The Phenomena, with Marty Smith, Team Honda.